Yes. 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 So, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the M Music session here at IETF 101. I am Bo Burman, and this is my co chair, Fleming Andreasen. Uh, on the screen, you have the IETF note well. Should you not have seen it before or not read it, we strongly suggest you do so. Uh, did anyone? Not sign the blue sheets. We have uh, one note taker, Ronnie Evan. Uh, do we have anyone able to join the jammer room? Jonathan today. Jonathan is coming in the room. Uh, Jonathan, would you support. mind getting in the Jabber room for us? Thank you. We have a known role. In the back department. Give me a second. I'll take the Jabber room. I can take it. I know. Uh, when you speak, please use the microphone and state your name. And for the presenters, we have a nice pink square up here. Uh, IETF is dependent on good document review, review and uh, we ask you to please review documents in your own working group and also at least one other document from another working group. <laughs> this is today's agenda. It's reasonably short. We have two documents being discussed today. It's the session de description protocol, the 4566 BIS, a few open issues and the short presentation on status for the STP offer answer procedures for ICE. Anyone wishing to bash that agenda? So, uh, for the working group status, we have no published RFCs since last meeting, but we have quite a few in the RFC editor queue and I believe many of them are uh, have interdependencies, so expect many to be published as once at once. Uh, we have one draft in ITF last call until last of March, and we have two drafts: the bundled negotiation and the trickle I SIP in ISG review currently. The STP simulcast is publication requested. Uh, we have no drafts waiting for write-up, but we have two drafts in working group consensus. That's the RTC web data channel STP negotiation, where we have a few comments. Uh, and that's the same for the 4566 BIS, a few comments that's still to be addressed. The ICIP STP document is in working group last call, and there we have uh, some shepherd and review comments, just as the previous two documents. 
uh, Ronnie Evan, uh, I didn't see any any message on the data channel SDPNG. Did I miss something? Because I'm, I'm I don't understand uh, the status of that. The data channel SDPNG? Yeah. Uh, we had. <clears throat> I believe the author posted the new version. I think I saw it was going to publication, but that's the last thing I've seen on the mailing list. So he, he, he submitted I'm, I'm the editor now, so that's what I'm asking. <laughs> we had uh, a few comments based on the Shepherd's review. And uh, other than that, I was not aware of anything. Was it the MSRP one? That was just yeah, posted. Yeah, the yeah, it was the MSRP yeah, one. Yeah, MSRP, MSRP one sorry, was just yeah. posted. Yeah, sorry. Okay, I'll check it. I, I'm, I'm not aware. I thought I didn't have any work on that. That's why I'm confused to see that you, that you mentioned that there's something I have to do. If I remember your your comment correctly, you answered that those comments would be addressed, but we'll fix that. Okay. Uh, we have no new work items. We have... Uh, Three drafts that are not on the agenda or already covered. We have a new author for the MSRP usage for the data channel uh, that was recently updated. We have the previous milestone for the opportunistic negotiation draft, uh, which was extensively discussed among the ADs. And the decision was there that uh, the related draft in SIP Brandy will be continued and this one will no longer be needed. So we have also dropped the milestone for that one. And the last draft is the PUKS that needs review. Yeah, and I actually, I know Martin, who's one of the authors of this draft, he was actively soliciting feedback. So could we get some volunteers to review the draft? Don't don't all speak at once now. <laughs> no volunteers. There was a disturbance back here. I'm not sure everyone heard the question. Yeah. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so Martin, who's one of the co-authors of this draft, uh, had asked unknown key share. He has asked for feedback on the draft. He's not aware of any open issues, but he would like more review. So he was asking if we could find somebody to help review with the draft. So that is the request here. Is anybody volunteering to review this draft? I'll review it, but I don't think I understand all the security issues that's solved. OK, thank you, Jonathan. Anybody else? Thank you, Mark. Yeah. All right, thank you, guys. <coughs> and finally, we had one SDP directorate and assigned designated expert review in the negotiating human language in the SLIM working group. Uh, a follow up on this slide that we had, had presented before. This is the table with the RTC web dependencies that we have here in MUSIC. It's starting to look pretty good. Uh, we have a number of drafts that are in RFC editor's queue already. Uh, as you saw previously, we have the bundle in ISG review. Uh, we have simulcast publication requested. Uh, the RID is in IETF last call. And there is uh, the trickle ice is in ISG review. And the only one that is not submitted for publication has working group last call ended with a few comments, the ICIP SDP, and that is also here on the agenda today. Anybody have any comments on anything? If not, Ali, you're up next. Okay, um, 
We have been working on this uh, STP revision for some time. Uh, just a few minor issues are remaining, hopefully. Uh, this went through the chair review. Uh, uh, and uh, we got some comments from Fleming. I already addressed most of them uh, by the help of uh, some people in the list and then uh, some, some of my quarters. But there are a couple of uh, still remaining ones and then we would like to go over them uh, today. Hopefully close them and then you know I can uh, push another revision and then maybe we can uh, go for publication quest. So number three, um, uh, I'm using the issue numbers that I posted in the list just to be in sync. So um, the comment says, uh, we have a text in section 5.9 uh, about the time zone stuff. Um, you know, the text wasn't really clear which time zone it was referring to. Uh, it turns out that it is the UTC. But then there is another field called the uh, Z equals field, uh, which is the time zone adjustment. So if, it is, if it's always UTC, then why do we need an adjustment field in the first place? That was a comment. And uh, Maybe someone who has been familiar with STP for a much longer time than I am might be able to answer this question. Hey, uh, the time zone adjustments, they're for daylight savings time. Uh, they're, for, they're, they're for announced um, SAP sessions where, where the, um, there's a specified uh, time for the session and it spans daylight savings time. It's to show you when the daylight savings time adjustments happen. Okay. John, yeah, the time zone adjustments are specifically for repeating sessions. So this is the, the, so the these are the initial session in UTC, but repeating sessions, which repeat like once a day, you have, might you have to do the daylight savings time. It's a primitive and semi-broken version of what. Um, the V calendar did in much greater detail later because it's actually a harder problem than this. But um, yeah, the, the idea is that this is, it especially says this is for repeating conferences in the spec. Okay. okay. So. Yes. The, the, the way it was implemented was this seminar repeats once a week at uh, one o'clock and um, well, daylight saving time, time changes in the middle. Therefore, <laughs> put it in your calendar at a different time. Okay, looks like it's gonna stay there. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Next slide. That was easy. Okay. Uh, issue number four. Uh, we have the p time and max p time values. Uh, we decided in uh, one of the earlier meetings to make these uh, non-integers floating numbers, uh, the fractional values. Uh, so that was uh, agreed in a meeting uh, some time ago. But now, uh, I don't see Magnus in the room, but he made a recommendation on the list uh, saying that uh, we should leave the P time and max P time values uh, in that uh, equals uh, um, if, if, uh, FTMP lines and deprecate the use on meter stream level. Um, and, you know, nobody really uh, got back to Magnus on that recommendation on the list, and I wanted to bring this up here in case anybody has a comment on this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I have a comment from Paul. Um, hi. Um, I, I mean, I'm fine with deprecating it, but we still need to put something in for the syntax, even if we're going to deprecate it. So I think we still have to answer the question one way or another. Uh, Fleming, Andreas, and as individual. I'm not sure I exactly understand what it is that Magnus recommends, but if you're talking about deprecating these, I'm not sure that's a good idea because there are other people that are using them today. I know that much. I think Magnus's motivation was, uh, you know, there could be multiple, uh, you know, P time or max P time values uh, for for the uh, for the media that is using the same specific payload type number, and then uh, you know it wouldn't really indicate any, anything significant. So there could be multiple media types under that uh, um, different P time values under that payload type number. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think the limitations of P time and max P time are well understood, um, but that doesn't mean that it's safe to deprecate them because, like I said, there are people that are using them for you know 
all the perhaps wrong reasons, but that's all that there was. Hi, uh, Colin Perkins. You mean different p-type numbers for an M-line rather than for a payload type number? But yes. uh, yeah, yes. um, I, I think I, I agree with Fleming. I, I don't think it makes sense to deprecate this. Um, it, it works perfectly well for a large number of use cases, True. Uh, and it has limitations. And we should probably document the limitations, but I, and, and you know, possibly recommend that new deployments would do something else. But uh, yeah, it, it solves the problem for many cases, and I think uh, I think we have to keep it. <laughs> Okay, we keep it, and we document the uh, shortcomings. All right, anything? Well, we, well, but, you know, we still have an answer. Yeah, you know, we're still. I mean, the original question was, you know, somebody raised a question of whether this ought to allow fractional values or not. And um, apparently, we made that uh, decision sometime in ITF ninety two. Uh, uh, I agree. So, I mean, we could just say, yeah, it's okay the way it is, but I mean, I think somebody raised the issue, so I think we need to res respond to them. <laughs> well, I think the initial comment came from Fleming saying that he always thought these numbers uh, were integers, but then. Okay. Um... Yeah, <clears throat> Fleming again, this is really a question for implementers more than anything, right? Yeah, that, that was my assumption. Um, <sighs> And it, they if, used to be integers. If, if if that's not a universally shared assumption, uh, <laughs> then you know, all right, fine. If it is, then again, I think we have to be careful with changing things in a non-backwards compatible manner, especially if we're recommending not really to use this, right? Except for backwards compatibility and legacy issues. Uh, uh, my memory might not be exactly right, but my recollection is that in forty-five sixty-six. Um, this just said it should be a number, you know, in text, and there was no syntax, and it didn't say whether it was, yeah, you know, whether it allowed fractions or not. Uh, and yeah, so cool. it was in the pro it was in the process of trying to put some syntax in for it that the question came up, and at the time, which is like a couple of years ago now, I think yeah. uh, we. Uh, yeah, I couldn't find a full history, but but we we discussed it and decided that it was, we thought it, maybe it ought to have fractions in it, and so we ended up with syntax that had fractions. Right. So, so let me just ask the question. I mean, more generally in the room, you know, uh, what are people's opinion? You know, experience, implementation, etc. Uh, Colin Pikins. So I have a hazy recollection we added it because there was a codec that needed it. But then yeah, I, I, right. I went and looked and couldn't find one. But there are a lot of payload formats, so maybe I missed it. <laughs> we said if the number will be an integer, we will just leave it as an integer in the p time or max p time value. But if uh, there's a need for fractional values, we will support it. That's what we said at the time. But, uh, uh, John, I mean, Opus can do two and a half millisecond packetizations, um, which is needed for very hard real time <laughs> encodings. So, <clears throat> okay, so we we got a use case, huh? Yeah, so Fleming again. So, I mean, Ali, I think what you just said, I mean, that text I think makes perfect sense, right? Because uh, that gives you the best of both worlds. <clears throat> Shouldn't break anything that doesn't need it, and if something does, well, obviously it would support it. Okay. All right, sounds good. Um, next slide, please. OK, issue number seven. Uh, this is section eight. So uh, you know, Fleming get this comment, uh, why is the existing registration to uh, uh, 3711 not used? To, uh, why don't we just uh, remove it from here? Uh, I honestly didn't understand this comment very well, but uh, I mean, why, why does it hurt to have it here? So as an individual, again, I don't know if it hurts. It was more a question of, is this what it should be referencing in the IANA registry, or should it be referencing 3711? Uh, I mean, the, the number is, the, the reference is in here because someone complained about it last time we wrote this document. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, we, we, we 
we need to list the prot the, the protocols and you know, whether the IANA registry references this document or 3711. I mean, it, it, the IANA registry should probably reference 3711, but I don't think it does any harm if this says you know, this is a legal value. I mean, if we're going to list the values, we should list all of them, right? As a APPF and APPF and all of those as well, which is trivial to do, right? So why yeah. not? But if I recall correctly, of course, I don't remember the section numbers offhand. Was this in the IANA, IANA registration Correct. section? Yes. Right. So I think there is an existing registration, 23711, yes. and you're, su you're suggesting changing that now to 4566 bills. No, no, I'm not. The, the, the IANA registry... Um, well, the text is. I the, the text here just lists the, the values which are in the registry, I think, and references the documents. So you are saying it is it's not really saying register this under this registry, right? That's I think I mean, what I, uh, who knows. I, <laughs> th this document is filling in the registry and the registry is reference is defining some names that refer to some existing protocols. Correct. Yes. Um, this document should probably list all of the things which go in there in that registry and say, you know. The, the, the values in this registry are RTP, AVP, RTP, AVPF, SAVP, SAVPF, UDP, whatever it is, and list the references for all of those. And the registry should be made to match because it's listing the, the legal values for the proto field. Okay. And then uh, I suppose uh, we should put a note to, to IANA uh, editor saying that, you know, we should really make sure that the table, the registry is up to date with all these listings. Well, I, I mean, if, if you put, put it in here, then the registry will be made up to date when they end up yes. the document. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Paul in the queue? Yeah. Um, I, think I'm, I think I disagree. Um, I mean, it, I mean, what needs to be here is instructions to Diana to register things that aren't already in the registry from something else. And I mean, so like, if the registry currently re refers to 4566, then we probably ought to have something in here that, I mean, we need to have something in here that refers, you know, that re-registers it since we don't want the registry to continue to reference 4566. Um, but, things that are already in the registry because they've been registered by some other RFC. I, I don't see, I mean, why putting them in here is helpful. This makes it more complicated, for instance, if, 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 if someone were to, uh, to rev 3711 um, and, and therefore its replacement changed the, you know, had a new I and I have you know, consideration section that changed the registry to point it to it. Um, then, then we just have a conflict with this document. So, uh, Colin Perkins, uh, I, I actually went and read the registry. <laughs> um, so, um, the, the registry, you know, the the only thing the the, the registry has pointing to 4566, uh, RTP, AVP, and, and UDP, which seems like the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, the rest all reference, and there are actually very many of them, yeah. uh, and they all reference other, the, the appropriate other documents. So having read that, I, I think the right thing to do, I, I, go, I largely agree with Paul and take back what I said before, this should just mention RTP, AVP, and UDP, and say there are other values, go see the registry. Okay. Um, what this should probably what I think this is probably doing is saying what goes in the registry. So we should make sure it's clear about you know, what what value you need and which, which I think it is. It just says you need a, the name and the, the reference. Okay. okay. And so good. Th there are many more of these than I realized we'd registered. <laughs> <laughs> so just from my notes, I understand that it, to, to keep like this and to add, to add the reference to the registry for the others, I mean, 
that's to, to just to just list this uh, RTP AVP and the UDP and 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 yes, we give a reference the to the we remove the secure RTP from here and then we say there are other things yeah, uh, that yeah, go okay. into the registry and uh, this is what goes into the registry. Okay, next slide. Uh, the same section. Um, okay, uh, a similar comment for uh, transport protocols. Uh, we have an existing registration for UDPTL, which references T38. Uh, and uh, Fleming says it should re refer to 7345. And I just checked this yesterday. Uh, I think that's a correct uh, statement, comment. And then uh, should I just put a note for uh, editor? To fix this, is that reference to UDPTL made the registration for UDPTL made by this document, or is it just the, no, the, no? No. So, so just talk to the the IANA and get them to fix it. So, so the chairs should talk to IANA and say, look, okay. look, there's a mistake here. Please fix it. Okay. Okay. So that's an action item for you, Flavor. <laughs> Got it. Uh, Paul. Um. I don't have the answer in front of me. I'm, it, 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 is this saying that RFC 7345 has a um, IANA consideration section that registers, registers it is the definition for for T38? No, 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 no. Um, the existing right. registration has UDPTL, which seems okay, to be okay for UDPTL. And Fleming says it's incorrect. It should rather refer to a 7345. And uh, the uh, the action item here is uh, for you know Fleming to contact Ayana and say, you know, you should fix this uh, reference. So this really has nothing to do with our BIS draft. I, I agree. It has nothing to do with our draft. Um, I guess my question is, does if the reference is that yeah yeah paul so is, is, is there a, is there a, it does 7345 have an iana consideration section that that registers itself it, that registers udptl rep pointing to itself it it does, it does. Yeah. yeah okay and no i just looked at it only it's only jonathan it's 7345 is only udptl over dtls not raw udptl as far as i can tell Okay, then who does the UDPTL in the first place? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Maybe T38. I don't know. <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, anyway, we will we will probably you know contact IN and uh, get this fixed one way or another if there's an error. Well, but I, I think I mean the comment from Jonathan, right, is is correct, right? 7345 does actually not register UDPTL. It registers it over TLS, which is a different thing. So the, the initial reason for the comment was that there is a requirement here saying that you must reference an RFC, and here we have a registration that does not. You know, maybe we'll just ignore that and say, you know, whatever. That would be the easiest way of dealing with that. We can follow up and run that down, but it doesn't seem to impact this document. No. Yeah. Well, does this document? Wouldn't would I mean maybe it's the right answer, but wouldn't wouldn't I mean if, if this document remains like this, then the only way to really fix the thing, it sounds like, if if currently the only definition for UDPTL is in T, is is via T thirty eight, then wouldn't it require someone to submit an RFC that references T38 that the, that the, that the registry could reference? Um, and, John, like, this and, sounds to me more like, um, you know, we need to, so I think the reason why this impacts this document is because of the, the this IANA uh, registry requirement. And basically yeah. this, IANA, this, this registry doesn't allow registrations by ITU documents but we've done it anyway. So maybe we should change the, and I'm not exactly sure how we should word this because we don't want this to be just specification required or something like that. Yeah. But we don't, or maybe, or maybe we should just say, we, we're, okay, we're grandfathering T38. Um, and just tell Ayanna, I mean, I don't know if that document you needs to say that or just tell Ayanna, yes, we're grandfathering that, whatever. <coughs> All right. 
Uh, Colin Perkins, there's an RFC somewhere that gives guidelines for writing IANA considerations, and it has some suggested wordings for this sort of thing. And I believe one of them is a standards, a standard produced by a recognized standards body. And they've got some suggested words for how to describe that. If we want to generalize it. Well, the only thing I hear you so far directly. is either specification required or RFC required. I'm yeah. sure there are others, but. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> ask IANA and they will suggest appropriate wording, because okay. they've done this before, if, okay. if you want to generalize it that way. And are we are we okay to you know reduce the requirement from an RFC requirement to a, like a specification required by a recognized organization? Are we okay with this? More inclined to grandfather Yeah. Microphone, please. Sorry. <coughs> Jonathan, as I was saying, I'd, I'd be more inclined to grandfather T38 than give the ITU blanket permission to register these things going forward. I, I will agree with that, actually. <laughs> Stefan? <laughs> I mean, as an individual, I agree with that as well. Which means there's no conclusion. No, I think there is. Yeah, so I think the suggestion right now is that we will grandfather in T38, and that's it. And we will keep the requirement as it is. Are it required? Someone needs to do that. It's already in there. So. All right. Next slide, please. Okay, issue number eight. Uh, this is the media format section. Uh, so this was a comment from Fleming and Paul. Uh, where are these registrations to be done? Diana instructions and the actual location of the corresponding registries are unclear. Uh, so, I mean, there, there, there's a registry, but nobody really seems to have the clear instructions for this registry. So. What do we do with it now? R RFC 3555 describes how to do this. Only for RTP. Right, but this is only for RTP, for the media formats. So that's the, OK. So for, I mean, for the RTP case, it says um, you use the media type registration, which is the MIME, <laughs> the, the MIME media type registry. Correct. Uh, an RFC 3555 describes the registration processes and should possibly be cited. Okay. Um, and for the rest, um, it specifies how to do it. You know, for, for UDP, you should be registered um, of a protocols according to the rules of the proto spec. So it depends on the proto that's being described. So for, for RTP, it's RFC 3555. For UDP, it's what's written in here. For anything else, it depends what that proto, proto is. Okay. Okay, we should probably make that clear so, in the so, text. So, Colin, Colin, question for you: <clears throat> Do we need do we need additional specification around? I mean, how are those registrations for those other protocols done? Do we need to require that somebody has to write procedures for it? Or, I mean, right now it seems very open, right? And that was the issue. It's um, really not clear. I mean, it, it it is very open, but that's because it depends on what the other protocol is. Okay. I mean, it, it, it basically says if, if you're using something other than RTP or UDP here, I mean, you know, if, if you use flute, for example, then the flute spec should specify how you do the registration of t types for, for it. Uh, and okay. if, if that isn't clear, we should clarify the, the wording. But uh, uh, it, it is, it, it's intentionally very open because the, the namespace depends on the protocol. I think I think it's fine that it's open, but I think a little bit more guidance than around how do you restrict that openness once you actually have a particular specification would be helpful. Yeah, I mean, it may make sense to put in something that says, you know, the proto value defines the namespace, so whatever protocol is defined, you need to needs to specify how that namespace is managed. Agreed. Yep. But it should be standard. I think Paul is Paul. I almost changed my mind, but I guess I'll just comment anyway. Um, so it is clear then that 
the, the, the namespace is definitely governed by the proto and there's no need for uniqueness across protos? Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, and I think basically this is a requirement, Jonathan, a requirement on the RFCs we, the, the previous slide was talking about. Basically, when you, def when you register a proto, one of the things it has to specify is what the media formats mean and how they're registered. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Colin, I mean, I think historically the only one of these for which we had any sort of well defined policy was RTP. And it's basically, you know, historic, historical reasons. Um, and uh, I noticed Harold walked in just as we started this discussion, and we had a, a very, very long argument about media types and RTP many years ago, which I, I'm sure he recalls. So it, it took a long time to get there. Uh, and at least some of the ambiguity is due to the, uh, the, the nature of the discussion at the time. Don't change where you and Harold will start arguing again. <laughs> Right. <clears throat> so, so for the note taker, um, do we agree that we are leaving it more or less the way it is right now, but we will tighten up the specification to say if you have new prototypes, then I think Jonathan had some good tech suggestion basically saying that that new proto needs to come up with procedures for how you manage the media format namespace under that proto. Colin? Yeah, I mean, I think if we wanted to tighten it up, we could say for anything other than RTP and UDP, um, you, you, you might, you know, the new proto must describe the registration policy. Right. Sounds good. I mean, there needs to be some. Well, that's good because that policy could be first come first serve. It could be <laughs> only the one identified here and nothing else. Good. Okay. So for the note taker, you got it? Yeah. Okay. I like to add to the section about for other protocol, uh, you are specified uh, how to register. Uh, I must define the registration for media formats names. All right. Is that the last slide? One more. Okay, one more. Uh, okay. The CT and AS. Uh, so, right, uh, Fleming, this was also one of your comments. Uh, uh, should be uh, max attributes is going to be in RFC sooner than our uh, draft. So, should we rather just let it go uh, with that draft? Or, um, I mean, should we, should we ask INA to refer to that RFC actually? Or should we, should we ask it to refer to our draft? So, I mean, I mean, I think it should point to 4566 bis because you are changing the definitions, right? You're updating those. Right. So that's why I think should, the registration should be updated uh, accordingly. Any objections to that? Paul, are you okay with this as well? I think you had a comment earlier, if I remember correctly. Is the mic? Yeah. All right. Um, I actually don't remember if I, if I had a comment, I don't remember it. So yeah, I, I, I don't have a position on this one. Okay. So not today. <laughs> too too early in the morning. <laughs> Something like that. So I don't remember. Too early in the year. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Mux attributes. So so, um, are, have we have we added Mux attributes stuff to this document or not? I don't think so, right? No. Uh, actually, you know, we are updating a couple of registries, and then uh, we added a column for that. That's right. It. So, so the current so I had so Anna updated these currently to add the Mux attributes reference because um, Mux attributes extended 
the definitions, right? Well, right. Well, why did the registration change? Okay, yeah. So I mean, so my, my question is, do we still need the reference to MUX attributes to refer to what the MUX attributes draft did, so that the IANA draft should refer to 4266 bis and MUX, MUX attributes, or should it just refer to 4266 bits? Is my question. And clearly, the 4566 needs to get updated to bis. The question is, should the MUX attributes part still be there as well? Um, and I don't remember exactly what the MUX attributes registration did enough to know. I don't remember this, but did the, the MUX attribute document, uh, did the registration, change the registration? Did it do a new registration or just put the text that what you should do in this, what type it is in order just... I, I don't recall either. We'll have to go check on that. Okay. So, because I, I didn't think they did registration. I think they just mentioned what is the policy for, for they, each they, one. They reworked the registry format, but I don't recall if they also changed any of the registrations. So, so if I remember correctly, Max Attributes Draft, it's a column for each uh, attribute says, that says uh, media only, session only, both media session only. Yeah, yeah, I know, only, I, I, you know, I, I know that, but the question was, did they just go and update every registry that is in the, that's specified in the document? Because they have a lot, a list of all these attributes that they provide input about. I don't know if they changed the registry for that. For, for new registration, you must have this new definition in the registry, but right. I don't know. I don't know. So the question is, if now that you're doing a registry, should you update the registry accordingly to to uh, specify the max attribute also as part of the registration? If you're changing reg registration of this uh, of, of this uh, value, max that... attributes is in RFC 82Q now. It is. Yeah. Okay. Does that mean the INA changes uh, should have been already implemented? Yes, I believe yes. so. Yeah. yeah. So we can just go to the INA and see what changes they did, at least in the uh, oh, INA exactly. registers. Yep. Okay. All right. So, so the action item is uh, check the current INA register given that the max attributes is in the RFC editor queue and uh, see you know how they actually uh, changed or replaced the registries. And then, you know, based on that, we can we can refine the text over here. Because by the time we go through the process, uh, those tables are going to be refreshed anyway. So. All right. That's it. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ali. Uh, <laughs> have been Campbell before we sit down on this one uh, the open issue seven got Adam and I looking at the text for the uh, proto registry and it's weird uh, it it's, uh, should be registered and then further down it's well it can be experimental or, or informational but should be uh, standards track and these are all kind of unenforceable the way they are or it, it makes it hard might make it tough on the expert. So just to let you know, we're talking about that and we may bring that back up. Um, yeah, obviously it's been the way it's been for a long time. That's legacy text, but but it's weird. Colin Perkins, there, there were a lot of legacy uses of that field at the time, 4566 was being done, um, which is w why this text is so weird. We may want to clean it up. I don't know. I suspect most of those are gone by now. Cleaning it up doesn't mean we can't leave the bad stuff that's already there. Right? Yeah. I, I suspect the mad stuff has disappeared by now. It was a long time ago. But we can pick like an actual policy for the <coughs> <AI> document. <laughs> yeah. Right. You kind of need one. <laughs> okay. In that case, I, w I think the uh, area, Adam and I are probably in agreement that the working group should look at fixing that and, pick, and keep picking one of the currently defined policies. And if we need some text to, to uh, grandfather stuff that's already there, that's fine. Okay. 
wasn't a must to register, it was a should. <laughs> and, and for All right. <clears throat> so for the note taker, Ronnie, you got that? So the, the code is just to uh, change the, the current registration point to, to the current uh, procedures. That's what. Uh, to one of the currently defined yeah, well known yeah, policies. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Ali. Mark, you next. <coughs> All right. So uh, my uh, uh, co-editor at the uh, IC PSDP uh, on the. On this draft, uh, we are not able to make it this morning, Harry and uh, and Suas. So we met on. Uh, I met with uh, Suas on, on Monday, and we had at the time uh, five uh, open issues uh, that we were uh, going to present. But uh, I think on Tuesday, uh, Suas uh, met with uh, Christer who is uh, working on the ice bees uh, and uh, apparently they, they, they solve all the remaining uh, the remaining issues so um, they are supposed to um, so suas is supposed to uh, publish a new version of uh, ice sdp and so i ask to, to send me uh, a slide which you have uh, here there is only uh, one one slide so uh, hopefully we will have the uh, new version and, and the response on the, on Christer and Fleming uh, uh, reviews uh, soon in the mailing list. So I, I am reading like like you the, 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 the slide. So the, the next step uh, will be to remove the aggressive nomination references, uh, remove the generic ice related uh, procedure, and simplify clarify the offer of the uh, section. And uh, that's it. If you have any question or comment, I will uh, take them to uh, Suas. But uh, yeah. <laughs> this is way for ice to be done music. <laughs> yeah. I feel like this is for our whole music. <laughs> So, <laughs> any question, comment I can help with? If I can. Maybe just a clarifying question. Generate a PR versus submitting an updated draft. Is that one and the same or not? No, it's not. A PR is a proposition to modify the documents and the publication after. But, uh, okay. Um, so, so, when should we expect an updated document? So last week of approval, March approval. Yeah, I, I think you, you will not see a new, a new version of the document before May. And again, it's not in my hands. So. Okay. Uh, this is Ben. I just wanted to remind the room that this is a cluster 238 linchpin. So. Uh, I understand people can get work done when they get it done. May seems like a long time. I don't know if I can, you know, make any specific recommendation other than I'm a little sad, but I guess we do what we can do. Yeah, the, I, I, I would certainly have volunteered to, to work with uh, Suas on this, but I am not back in uh, in the U.S. until uh, mid April, so I could not even uh, help on this. I uh, wanted to in your. Yeah, I mean, I, I think from the chair's point of view, I mean, we'll try to contact the authors and see if we can get this expedited. Also, if it gives you a sense of competition, I think this draft and FlexFec, Payload FlexFec, are uh, in in uh, a race to see who can be the final linchpin. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the winning criteria? <laughs> First. <laughs> Not having the RFC editor frown at you when it all when it all comes out at once and it's your draft fault. <laughs> All right. So are the oh. RFC numbers for the cluster assigned in order of standard to Q? I doubt it. <laughs> no, I think they're assigned when they hit RFC as the top forty-eight. Oh. 
We may have the biggest group of consecutive really good drafts ever. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right. I will. I will try. Uh, I, I will contact uh, Suas not next week. I am off, but the week af after, and see if we can accelerate and at least have, have a new version mid up approval. Great. Appreciate it. To do my best. I was going to make one one other comment, and it's I'm not going to tell people how to do the work, uh, but uh, draft revisions are cheap. And often these things are easier to review in the form of a draft than in the SAPR for some people. Like I me. agree. <laughs> uh, okay, as I said, uh, I will uh, contact you uh, two weeks from now. Don't do the thing. Yeah, yeah but it's, I, I am a co so I don't want to be the last in the cluster either. So let's see if I can help. <laughs> All right. All right. So I have a dependency on something on a new draft. <laughs> <laughs> well, I certainly can do that, yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you, Mark. Uh, that is it, unless anybody else has anything they want to bring up. All right, thank you, everyone, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. That's it for art. Yeah. Is art is Hello. Art is living again in the security area. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Okay. I saw Ratcheting Trees and I saw the art acronym go by and I did not make the connection. Yeah. They know you can't have that. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm already going to be quite a few years in the art. No. It's becoming really boring. No, no, no. We, we need to not find it. Even though we've got our art. Oh, sure. Something else besides the art. Well, it's going to be a good thing. Anyone else? Well, because they...